Hey guys, it's Shaylin. I'm here today with another writing video. Today I'm going to be covering probably one of the most fundamental elements of writing craft that there is, and that's show don't tell. Before we continue, I just want to acknowledge the obvious. My hair is very short. I know. It's in fact shorter than I was intending it to be when I walked into the salon. If you think it looks bad, please don't tell me. I'm still in the process of trying to learn how to love this curly mushroom. So show don't tell. Probably the most basic fundamental writing device that you get. But I do think there's a lot to dissect. I don't necessarily think it's easy to implement. Show don't tell, as you're probably aware, basically means that you want to show the reader uh, the elements of your story in a way that's rich but also allows for them to infer rather than just directly telling them. So the basic example is if a character is sad, instead of saying I'm sad, the character would describe how it feels to be sad and we would actually see that and we would know that they were sad without them having to say directly I'm sad. However, I remember the moment that Show Don't Tell really clicked for me. And it was when I got some line edits back from a writing professor and she'd written in the margins, even in flashback, describe, don't explain. I feel like this was writing advice that, you know, I'd always understood, like I knew what it was saying, but I do feel like the language itself is a little misleading. And so I personally feel like saying describe, don't explain is much easier to understand than show, don't tell. Describing and explaining are more active words that tell you how to use language more precisely than show don't tell. Now I do know that a lot of articles about show don't tell really focus around when you should tell and when you should show. And I don't want to get into that because in my opinion that's moot, it's pointless. I think it's much better to just know how to make that judgment yourself um, when you encounter it than trying to look back to some article or video and go, okay, this is one of those cases you always show or one of the cases you always tell because there aren't really cases where you always tell or always show. Writing is just, it's too circumstantial for that. Even in this video, if I do mention like, oh, like showing can do this, that doesn't make it all, that doesn't mean it's always used in that case. Just talking about the actual benefits and what these two things accomplish will let, will give you all the tools that you need to know when you need to show and when you need to tell. Trying to boil it down into a list of shortcuts of when to do this and when to do that isn't helpful for anyone. It's better to just understand what it is and how to use it. So that said, let's talk first about describing. So showing. Um, I'm going to use these words interchangeably throughout the video, but describing and showing. So describing is rich, it's sensory, it's immediate, and it pulls the reader deeper into the story. And this makes it slower. It takes up more time and space on the page. It takes up more words. So when you're describing, you have control over um, what the reader sees or feels or experiences on a sensory level but you might have less control over how these things are interpreted or the emotions that are interpreted because that's what's implied and that's left to subtext. On the flip side, explaining is faster, takes up fewer words, takes up less space, but it's also detached and abstract. It doesn't really have sensory value and it doesn't feel very rich because there's nothing for the reader to really infer. When you explain, you do have more um, control over things like the emotions or the ideas that the character is trying to express, but you lose the visual aspect. So you kind of control the point you're trying to make, which is why explaining is kind of what you would see in a textbook. The point is very clear, but the um, sensory aspect or the visual aspect isn't really there. Explaining can be useful for quickening the pace, for explaining something that's necessary but not really interesting, something technical that we might just want to cover briefly. Say for example, the character um, is like a mechanic and there's a scene where they go to fix a car, but this has nothing to do with the story. All that really matters is that they fix the car and they get on the road. Rather than describing them fixing the car and all of that technical detail, you might just have them say, and then I fix the car. Explaining is kind of fine. You're covering something that is necessary. We do need to know the car was fixed, but we don't really need to know the details. That's not really interesting. It's not really relevant. Or perhaps if you've already covered something before. The main thing with explaining or telling and the biggest problem is that if you rely on it too much, if it's the majority or even a significant amount of your piece, 
it starts to feel really distant. The story starts to feel like a textbook or like a summary of the events rather than a rich depiction of them. Describing puts more trust in the reader because you're allowing them to infer based on your descriptions, but you're letting them experience the story in a much richer way. So for that reason, you want to describe as often as possible um, and use telling only when necessary. If you really struggle with this and you really want to learn how to do it, the best thing you can do as an exercise for yourself would be to write something in an objective point of view. So objective point of view is when you have a third person narrator who doesn't have access to anyone's internal world. I have never written a fiction piece in objective point of view, but screenplays are written in objective point of view. And I feel like I really learned how to show and not tell by writing screenplays because in screenplays, you have to do that problem solving. In, in a screenplay, you can't show anything that's not visible on the screen. If it says in a screenplay, you know, Jane feels sad. In fiction writing, that's bad fiction writing, but in a screenplay, you just literally, you can't write that. It just, it doesn't work with the form. So challenging yourself to write a piece in objective point of view will really force you to, to utilize this technique with no, nothing to fall back on. I remember the first few times I, the first few screenplays I wrote, writing some things and realizing, oh, I'm showing, like, look, mom, I'm doing it. One of the first ever screenplays I wrote, the main character, like, cut her finger in, like, an early scene or something. She had a band-aid on her finger, and as the screenplay went on, like, I had mentioned a few times, like, shown the band-aid that had gotten all frayed and gross and stuff, and I remember my screenplay professor writing on it, like, oh, this is a great way to show time passing. That's the kind of thing that I might have not thought to do in a fiction piece. You can only do it through images, and so trying to find an image that shows time has passed, that's the kind of thing that screenwriting just forces you to do, um, so it's a great exercise. So now I wanted to go through some examples, um, and so I wanted to cover a bunch of different contexts and what this might look like. I feel like the most common example we get of what show versus tell means is always with emotion. There are so many more contexts where this can be applied. So the first one that I have here is emotion. This is kind of the basic one. An example of telling would be she feels content. So here it is shown. And again, like this is what I mean by describe versus explain. Explaining, I just said she's content, but now I can also describe what it feels like to be content. Describe a situation where the character feels content. So she closes her eyes and feels the sunlight pulse against her face, soft but present, like bunny rabbit steps. So this is all like very soft. Maybe if she wasn't content, I could have described the feeling of the sun as something a bit harsher. Um, but in this case, it's like little bunny steps. So here it is with character. Example of telling would be just saying that a character has a certain trait. So for example, he was a shy man who didn't like speaking to people. So here's that trait shown. The doorbell rang and his chest tightened. He ducked to the floor so he couldn't be seen through the window and tried to crawl as quietly as possible up the stairs. So here we have a situation where we actually see the character go out of his way to not be seen and not be heard. We don't need to be told that he's shy and he doesn't like to speak to people. We can see that. So now let's look at plot. An example of telling would be, she went to the junkyard to scavenge for materials. And if we were gonna show that, obviously we'd need a full scene and I'm not gonna read a full scene to you, but we might have something that looked like this. The junkyard smelled like rust, the rod amplified by the heat, she kicked an oxide-eaten car hood aside with the toe of her boot, etc, etc. We would actually see her gathering materials, complications would arise, there'd probably be problems, and if this scene is important to the plot, then we want to describe it in a rich way, we want to show the whole scene. If the scene's not important at all, maybe we just want to say that she went to the junkyard and scavenged for materials, because that's maybe that's all that matters. So here's a case with dialogue. We could summarize dialogue, and that would be a form of telling. So for example, they talked about cheesecake. Um, valid topic of conversation. But if we wanted to, to show that same scene, of course we would have a full conversation. Again, I'm not going to read the full thing because this would be a full scene, but for example, I'm mostly into key lime these days, she said. I don't know, Elma got me into it. I was always more of a raspberry fan before, and that conversation might continue as long as it needs to. So we can also apply showing and telling to setting. So an example of telling would be, they stood before an old castle. That's a fine sentence on its own, there's really nothing wrong with that sentence, but on its own it's lacking sensory description, so we might expand it into something like this. They stood before an old castle. Moss dripped from the bricks like an old man's beard. One tower had caved over, 
leaving a pile of stones at the castle's foundation. Drought had evaporated the moat. We're actually seeing the castle rather than just being told that there's a castle there. We can also apply this to atmosphere, uh, similar to setting. So an example of telling with atmosphere would just be stating what the vibe is. So for example, it was a grim day. Whereas if we were showing that, it would go something like this. Charcoal clouds hung over the ocean, their low ceilings sopping with mist. The grass had been smashed into puddles and mud squelched under her boots as she walked. We can also apply showing and telling it to backstory. So an example of telling a character's backstory would be something like, she'd had a hard time finding a job. Here again, we've just kind of summarized, um, just said that she'd had a hard time finding a job. Now, we could show this very detailed by like having a full flashback to her like going to a failed job interview or something, but we could also just enrich the backstory if those details aren't that important by giving an expansion of an event that would start something like after graduation she'd applied for jobs across the province, then country, um, etc, etc. Again, I don't feel the need to go into like a page long description of this character's backstory, but we could have a much richer depiction of what that process looked like. Especially when it comes to an emotion, an easy way to look for instances of telling in your work is to just search for the emotion words. So search for the word sad in your document, search for the word happy. And if you are just using those words, it's probably an instance of telling. It's easy for people to kind of, and I'm speaking from personal experience, feel like they're showing when they label emotions, but they do it in a bit of a purple way. Saying something like anger bubbled through me, that's actually still telling. We're still labeling the emotion, we're still saying the character was angry, and sure, there are cases where you might feel like you want to label an emotion. If you actually just wanted to show that the character was angry, what does that physical sensation of anger bubbling through the character feel like without saying that there was anger involved. I think it's definitely worth saying that a lot of people can take a quest for showing a little too far. Be scared of just normal sentences, like people who are scared to say like, the sun was shining. And sure, like you can describe that in a more detailed way, but I, what I see a lot of people do in their attempt to show is basically just expand the noun. So instead of saying the sun was shining, say something like a fiery orb of light was shining. That's not making it showing instead of telling, all you're doing is adding unnecessary words and making it kind of purple. If you wanted to show that the sun was shining, there's that like classic Chekhov quote that's like, don't tell me the moon is shining, show me the glint of light on broken glass. You know, if you want to show that the sun is shining, describe the sun hitting leaves in the character's eyes, whatever is around, I don't know. You know, even like I've seen people raise issues with, quest with sentences that are really fine, sentences like she walked across the room. There's nothing wrong with that sentence. We don't need to really be shown more in that case. It's just a basic character action trying to describe in a really convoluted way how she was walking um, without saying the word walking. It doesn't add anything. It just convolutes it. It just makes it more difficult to understand. And showing shouldn't make the writing more difficult to read. It should just make it rich. I hope that this was useful. Even though it's very common advice, doesn't mean that it's easy to apply. It's actually not easy to apply. It can take a lot of practice. Common advice, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's simple. It's actually fairly complex. I hope that this clarified some things or was helpful at all if this is something that you struggle with. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can always send me an ask on Tumblr and I'll see you in another video. Bye.